Mr. President, I move that the body resolve itself into a joint session for the purpose of receiving an address by the Honorable Senior Senator from the State of Montana, Max Fox. As we gather here today, we do so a somber determination. Aware of the turmoil that faces our towns, our state, and our great nation. Montana and America face a defining moment. But this isn't the first time our nation has been challenged. And each time we have risen with grit and determination. There is no denying that our nation is facing the largest economic trial in 80 years. Since this recession began across the country, 2.6 million mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, wives, and husbands have lost their jobs. But as legislators, we have the power to change that. Not only do we have the power, it's our obligation. The people we represent are counting on us. We are only just a pair of hands here. It's our job to act. That's what people expect from us. I work around the clock in the new jobs bill, and that's why I was proud to join President Obama yesterday in Denver as he signed the American Recovery and Relief Act, the job bill. Not everyone agreed on the final package. Negotiations were tense. And at one point, I thought that Ron Emanuel, White House Chief of Staff, and I were literally going to have to visit us. It got to that point. But one thing is clear the economic recovery and jobs bill will provide the jolt our economy needs. It is the single largest piece of economic legislation in the history of our country. This bill will fund $626 million mm -hmm. into our state, our economy, right here. Again, $626 million. That's almost half the state's annual budget. <coughs> and more importantly, it will protect and create 11,000 jobs here at home. And working with Senator John Chester, who's not only one of the best senators in the Senate, but also one of the best people in the Senate, we help craft this job's legislation and give our state a jumpstart if so desperate to be. We craft legislation that will put more money in people's pockets through tax cuts, that will help send more kids to college, reduce our dependence on foreign oil, and help people retire. More importantly, we craft legislation that is right for Montana. We now begin the process of making sure these dollars are spent on the main streets in Montana the right way, right away. While this common sense bill is critically necessary, it is not a silver bullet. It is not a cure-all. This bill represents one leg of a three-legged stool. The other two legs being addressing our nation's housing prices, the second being freeing up our credit lines. These measures taken together are a solid start, but are still very fun days ago. Amidst all the dark clouds surrounding our economy, there is one bright ray of sunshine, and that's our effort to cover more children under the Children's Health Care Program. You know, I have a confession to make. I am not a fan of children. I'm not a fan at all. I'm a fanatic advocate of children. <laughs> Children's Health Insurance Program is real. It's a real program that helps real families who are really in need. I helped create uh, Children's Health Insurance Program in 1997. That's been, I think, one of the most successful programs we've ever undertaken. Since 1997, the Children's Health Insurance Program has got 51,000 kids in our state <coughs> just getting started. There are still 34,000 children in Montana without health insurance. That is 34,000 children. It took more than two years. It was vetoed twice, let me tell you, it was not easy. But two weeks ago today, I stood proudly at our friend Bob Schulber as he signed my bill to extend the Children's Health Insurance Program. And it wasn't quite a show. It was pride in knowing that thousands of children in our state, maybe even the future president of the United States, would be able to live a healthy life because of the work we were doing. Like Walt Roberts says, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And expanding the Children's Health Insurance Program and Initiative 155 are good for success. First step in the journey providing health care coverage for every American. In closing, I want to leave you with a quote from President Kennedy. On a cold January morning in 
1961, a young president bounced up to support him in the capital steps with beautiful day. And as Williams tuned in with the Pope's of better tomorrow morning, here's what he said. In your hands, my fellow citizens, more than mine, will rest the final success or failure of our course. And I say to you all, <laughs> the same thing today. In your hands, more than mine, rest the future to our state. Be wise, be prudent, serve those who have entrusted you, and as we come together, we can make my 